Hey there, my name is Adam Ambrosi. I'm a researcher and a strategist currently studying digital experience design at Hyper Island Manchester. I've worked and lived in several countries of the world and wherever I lived I always tried to immerse myself in new cultures. So I lived with local people, observed them in day-to-day -day situations, ate what they ate, danced what they danced and documented their lives wherever applicable. During all my experiences, I learned that doing cool ethnographic projects, effective ones, useful for your projects, is all about practice, practice, practice. Read, see, experience, practice, iterate, and just enjoy. What can be more exciting to discover than people, their dreams, fears, behaviors, and motivations? If you feel ignited with what I'm saying right now, this movie is for you. Today I'm gonna tell you what ethnography is, how to use it, why is it useful and how to prepare yourself for a proper observatory session. Let's start. Ethnography. We can describe ethnography from different perspectives. Handbooks of traditional research methods mostly describe ethnography as a mixture of participatory observations and interviews with the objective to collect data to throw light on the issues of the research. Although it is very clear and self-explanatory, this definition sounds so tool-oriented and a bit dehumanized to me. It's very far from what ethnography is at its heart. Ethnography is all about people, about understanding. Michael Burrow builds on that and defines ethnography as the study of people in their own time and space in their own everyday lives. I would un add one layer to it, citing Scott Reeves who said, Ethnography is the study of social interactions, behaviors, and perceptions that occur within groups, teams, organizations, and communities. So ethnographers enter the spaces of their participants to gain a deeper understanding of how people experience, perceive, create, and navigate the world. Nowadays, these definitions did an upgrade. Today is not only about observing people in their natural habitat, being there in person, but also online. See what people talk about, what they publish, how they share, what they express, how they express their feelings and emotions, as well as define the role of technology plays in their lives. Technology is evolving at a very fast rate, changing the way people live, for instance, by stuff, from groceries to shoes, how they consume news, connect with others, from form communities and forge identities. Ethnography needs to adapt to this change and immerse in the online world. In the end, it's not about offline, online, digital, real. It's all about understanding a seamless experience between them. Ethnography is useful for various areas of life, from launching technological innovations to design, from advertising to simply having better conversations with people. It brings understanding. It brings real knowledge about real people, about their behaviors, motivations, habits, fears, dreams. How cool is that? Let's talk about one of the most traditional methods, observation and participatory observation. One is in theory different from another, a simple observation does not allow to ask questions and participatory observation allows to ask them. In practice, when you plan your research project and then immerse yourself in culture, you don't really think of methods or tools. You just go and live there. You observe, ask questions to get to know why people behave, how they behave. The division of tools is not important at this stage as they all merge during a longer research. Tapping on ethnography and participatory observation, the leading global design agency IDEO developed a tool named Immersion and this is how they describe it. There is no better way to understand the people you are designing for than by immersing yourself in their lives. From my perspective, observations are super important in the beginning of each design pro uh, process and I do them directly after, after desk research as they give me an opportunity to experience new contexts by using all my senses and to build my deeper understanding of subjects. They are also undisputedly important, taking into consideration the concept of place as an important part of the ethnographic practice in anthropology, which in practice means that nothing, nothing is better than being with people in their natural habitats and understand the networks that happen naturally over there, the connections and the interactions. 
do a lot of visual ethnography in your project, collect pictures, videos, but remember that visual methods cannot be used independently from non-visual methods. You need to define the meaning to each and every visual footage you have. So a quick recap now. Four things to remember. Focus on people, not on tools. Merge online with offline in your thinking. Treat them as one single play playground as people do. Treat people as friends, not participants in your research. Document stuff and take notes. The more visual footage you record, the better and more inspiring. Time to do some research and homework, guys. So your task is to understand the role of Friday night out in your life and in the lives of your folks. What role does it play? How relevant it is? How do you plan it? Where are you going? Are there any routines? Maybe it's always spontaneous, maybe sometimes planned. Think when, think what, think why. When does the idea pop up in your head for the first time? During work on Monday? Note it down and take pictures of your surrounding to remember the situation. Or maybe during a conversation with Susie on Wednesday when she asks what you are doing on Friday. Note it too. This week you do it observing yourself. Next week do it with your partner, sibling or a friend. See the differences, map them, ask them to take pictures too. See how your visual representations of the evening differ one from another. Or maybe they are similar. Try to define what you see. Try to cluster to find patterns. So we are just a step from having it planned. Your first participatory observation. Let's plan it now. Up from now, map all the thoughts or conversations you have about Friday night. Every artifact matters. Every conversation matters. S two, you will need notebook, camera and a good microphone or voice recorder. Free, do a quick research of online media. See how people use Facebook to plan, the, to plan or tell stories about their Friday nights. After your desk research, note down your first observations. So, let's just do it. If you still feel the need to have some more theoretical background, have a quick scan of these two books. First of, of them, Wendy Gordon's Good Thinking is a bible of qualitative researchers. A brilliant summary of methods and tools and really tons of useful information and practical tips. The second one is the ideal guide of field research, very practical too and to the point. Besides, you can have a look uh, over Sarah Speak's books. She published a lot from doing visual uh, ethnography, doing sensory ethnography to doing digital ethnography. So basically she covered most of the angles. If you want to know more about digital ethnography, click here to see a movie of Aparna, who is my fellow researcher, brilliant stuff over there and very complimentary to what we are doing here. And if you want to know something more about how to do interviews, click here to see Guillermo's video. Should you have any questions, drop me a line or I will try to get back as soon as possible. Or if you liked it, you have a comment, you want to have some discussion over, uh, over the subject, just leave me a comment in the, in the comment section below and just go there and have, have fun out there, guys. This is Thiago, 